North America, Human Characteristics Part 2. Okay, so we've um, we've already discussed the beginnings of uh, the early settlers in North America and some other basics. So let's move to the second part. And before we do that, let's take a look at the world population, the first world population. And we'll tie this into North America. Uh, the population of the entire planet Earth is a little bit over 6 billion, closer to right now, right at 7 billion. The population for the United States of America is right at um, right over 300 million. Now, we need to count to the last census, but the most up-to-date information that I had last uh, information we had is right over 300 million. The population density, which is the average amount of people living per square feet in the United States, is 78 people per square mile. Canada's population is 33 million, right over 33 million. And the average population density of Canada is eight people per square mile. Let's take a look at this map to the right. It'll kind of go. It, it This is a population density map of Canada. I want you to take a look at some things. First, um, notice northern Canada. Not a lot of people in northern Canada at all. Also, northern Canada is very close to the North Pole. So, Northern Canada is very close to the North Pole. It's also very close to, to um, Alaska. Some of the coldest parts in the world. Northern Canada, very, very frigid, very, very cold places. So we see the majority of the Canadian population in this. Taking a look at the map key, it shows us that the darker spots mean the more densely concentrated people, more people per square mile. We see in Canada that the people, this is actually part of Canada, Canada, Canada. Um, the largest population distributions of Canada right here are right along the United States border. So the majority of the Canadian population is lives close to the United States border. They're in this area um, close to the United States border. And that brings us to your two homework questions or two of your homework questions. Uh, use this map to answer it. This is the same population map from earlier, from the previous slide. Um, and it is, the question is, why is Canada's population density is so low? The first question, and what that question is asking is, why are there so few people living per square mile in Canada? What are some reasons why I would use this map? Use this map as um, the answer is in the map. And number two, which part of Canada is more densely populated and why? And just take a look at it. this is all the uh, this is Canada. Which part of Canada is more densely populated? And then you have to answer the question of why. Now, getting back to Canada, about 90 percent. What did I mention earlier? I've already mentioned that Canadians, the majority of Canadians live close to the United States border. But the specific number or the or the number is 90% of Can Canadians live in cities close to the border with the United States. Talking about the major population centers of the United, United States, that is what all of these pictures have in common. Each one of these pictures represents the major population centers of the United States. We have the Northeast with uh, Pennsylvania, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Boston, I mean Connecticut, New Jersey. We have the Great Lakes region with Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Wisconsin, and the Pacific Coast region with mostly California, Oregon, and Washington. These are, when we're talking about population distribution, these pictures represent where the majority of the population lives in the United States. So in the United States, the Northeast, the Great Lakes, and Pacific Coast regions are the most densely populated. A question that you can ask yourself is why, but let's take a look at it. They're close. They're all close to water. You see the Great Lakes in the Great Lakes region, the Atlantic Ocean in the Northeast, and the Pacific Ocean in the um, Pacific region or the Western region. Now, the major cities along the East Coast, which are some of the oldest cities in the United States, or some of the this is where our first oldest, largest cities are. Um, I, which is still where our population centers are concentrated and also the wealth in our country goes from Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York, Boston, Hartford, Connecticut, 
they actually all can form. There's it's not as much distance in between them as you guys would think. And so they actually form um, one major megapolis. Some geographers say that they form a, a major a megapolis. And the cities along the northern Atlantic coast of the U.S. form a megapolis, nicknamed Boswash. And the name goes from Boswash is, if you think about it, the most northern city is Boston. And the most southern city is, is, is I'm sorry, the most northern city is Boston. And the most southern city is Washington, D.C. And let's go count them down again. Boston, Hartford, Connecticut, New York, Philadelphia, Baltimore. Washington, D.C. And Boswash, as geographers call it, um, is what a megapolis. We've already discussed what a megapolis is. It's a gigantic city. Now, one thing I want you to take a look at, looking at these pictures, a lot of the major cities in North America, not just in the United States, in North America, are along the coast. So we're looking at the coastal cities of Boswash again. We're looking at... Um, Boston, Hartford, Connecticut, New York, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., Baltimore. They all are, oh, Florida. In Florida, you see Miami. You see um, New Orleans and Louisiana and Houston and Texas. They're all near or located near the coast. That is important because cities, that is a way for cities, early cities were near coastlines or on the water because that's where transportation, that's where trade, transportation, trade, the soil was fertile in these areas. So that's why you see the majority of our large, great cities or our commerce centers on um, areas of water, located near areas of water. And we look at even the major inland cities. Let's take a look at the major inland cities like Chicago, I'm sorry, Chicago, Detroit, Montreal, Canada, they're located on or near banks of water. So location of water, proximity of water is important. And the question that you're probably asking is why um, is it important? What are the benefits of being located near the coast or different inland waterways? Well, this is the deal. The proximity to natural resources, fertile soil, because Soil tends to be fertile the closer you are to water. Transportation routes are developing. So these are the first places where, remember, early man traveled a lot by boat. And even we still travel a lot by boat. But traveling a lot by boat. So the places that were nearest the water were the places where people arrived to first. So when you think about the benefits of natural resources, fertile soil, and transportation routes, this is why that we have so many of our major cities and actually LA is right here and San Diego is right here our major cities are either on the coast or on large bodies of water now the subarctic region of Alaska and also the Great Basin um, which are parts of the United States in Nevada Utah and Arizona these are parts of the Great Plains, and they're the most densely or the least densely populated. These are the places where the fewest amount of people live in North America. In the subarctic region of Alaska, which means that it's right underneath um, the subarctic region of Alaska, it's right underneath the Arctic, Nevada, Utah, and Arizona. Why? It's because of the climate. The climate in these places is very harsh. Okay, so the climate in these places are very harsh. When you think about the subarctic region, it's cold. And when you think about those parts of the Great Basin, those tend to be desert areas or places that do not ease, do not have fertile sand, fertile land or resources. All right. Uh, the end. Make sure that you highlight the answer, highlight the answers to the homework learning targets and answer any questions that are bolded. Have a good evening.